Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today what we're going to work on is hallmarking our jewelry designs in Blender 2.82. Hallmarking is the process of engraving the carat type of gold or silver that you're using, as well as putting maybe a company logo into the ring. And I'm going to show you two ways to do it. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. And every time you hit the like and subscribe button, it helps my channel grow. Thanks guys, and let's get started. To make a hallmark is pretty simple in Blender. We're, we're going to walk you through the stage here. First things we, we have to do is we have to make a ring. So I'm just going to go through the basics and make a quick ring to uh, use for a hallmark. So just bear with me a second while I make myself a ring shank. And I am going to size this down. I'm going to press N to uh, get my tools here. So I am going to select my cube. I'm going to turn this into a uh, ring shank and we're going to make this, uh, let's say two millimeters by two millimeters by two millimeters. I'm going to size it along the Y axis about 3.5 millimeters. And then we will size this along the X. And I'm just going to make that about 57 millimeters, which should be about a size 7-ish. I'm going to enter tab for edit mode, and I'm going to press Control R, and we're going to add in, um, I'm going to add in 200 loop cuts. Press Enter twice, go back into object mode by pressing tab. And now we have a ring shank that we can bend around a curve. So now I'm going to add in a curve, and let's see, curve and a circle. I'm going to make this approximately 18 millimeters by 18 millimeters, RX 90. So we'll rotate that along the, the uh, X axis. And now I want to apply a curve modifier to my ring shank or my mesh. So I'm going to select that mesh. We'll come over here to the modifiers. We will add in a curve modifier. With the curve modifier selected, I'm just going to hit the Bezier circle. And now I have a ring shank that is approximately um, a size, most probably a size six. And we're going to size that along the X axis to about here. And I'm going to make that a little tighter. Yes. Bring that in just a little bit more, about like so. And with that done, I'm going to hit the Apply button on the modifier. So we'll apply that modifier. I'm going to get rid of the Bezier circle because we don't need that anymore. So I'll delete that. I'm going to select my ring shank, hit Tab. And I am going to select these two faces, the one on the insides. Hold the Shift key down, select the second face, and you can see those two faces are selected. X to delete those faces and now I will select my edge loop tool select the first edge loop hit shift alt and select the entire perimeter you can see it's selected there and then I'll select the opposite there so now those two are selected you do that by holding the shift and the alt key together what we want to do is bridge those so I'm going to right click loop tools and bridge and you can see it closes up our ring shank. So now I have a solid ring shank to work with. If we tab into the edit mode, you can see that I have lots of little lines going all the way around. Now you can do a lot of funny things with those little fancy things. If you wanted to curve out the inside, I can select my edge loop tool here, grab an edge loop, hit shift, alt, select the entire perimeter there. I'll do that to all four edge loops along the sides. So just keep your shift and your alt key held while you select those little edges. And now I can apply a bezel to those. So I will hit uh, shift B and oops, not shift B, control B. I'm sorry. Control B gives me a bezel bevel edge and that's not working out well. I hit tab to go into object mode, control A and I am going to align rotation and scale. Go back into edit mode and now I'll try control B. And there we go, we got a good bezel there. And I'll just give that a little bit of a curve. <clears throat> okay, so our ring shank is done. 
now the time is needed to add in our hallmarks. Now, the name of my jewelry company is called Rocks and Clocks Custom Jewelers. So I tend to hallmark my items with RCCJ and the carat mark. So if I was going to make a 14 karat gold ring, I would type in or I would engrave on the ring 14K space RCCJ. And then I know it's a piece that I made. It was custom designed for a person. So, so to add in your own hallmark, and we're going to use my jewelry bench as an example. So I'm going to add in the hallmark MJB for my jewelry bench. And I'm going to add in the carat mark, and we're just going to, you know, assume that I'm going to make a 14 karat ring out of this. So to do that, I will take my ring shake. I'm going to come over to the right side here. You see where the little eyeball is? I'm going to close that up so the ring is actually hidden. Now while I'm here, I'll rename that ring. So with our ring done, what we're going to do is we're going to take the ring, we're going to select it, we're going to come over here and hide it using the little eyeball over here and now it's hidden so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add in the text that i want to use to make my hallmark and again we're going to do um, the carrot mark and i'm going to put 14 carat here and then the mjb for my jewelry bench dot com so let's get that done i'm going to hit shift a to add, add an item and i'm going to come down i'm going to add in a text item and you can see on your screen you'll get the word text if you press the tab key, it goes into edit mode, and then you can type in just like you would any word processor. And I'm going to type in 14K, and I'm going to space and type in MJB. And then I'll press tab to go into object mode. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is going to look good for my uh, hallmarking. So I'll come over to the text options under geometry, and I'm just going to extrude that a little bit. Let's see here. Get that up to about here and if I want to give it a little bit of depth I can kind of make it a little thicker and that doesn't look too bad that hallmarking should work out okay once I've got that done I actually have to take this item because it's not a mesh it's actually like a curved object and what I want to do now is I want to turn it into a mesh so with that done I'm going to with the text selected I'm going to come over to my object menu here and we're going to come down to convert to a mesh from a curve meta surface or text item so I've converted that now to a mesh you can tell it's a mesh because it's got a triangle over here by the word text and with my text selected just because I like to have things in the center I will right click on the words I will come over to set origin center of mass and then I will press shift S and then the top or H on your keyboard if you press that you can move it to the middle of your screen. Now once that's done I can unhide my ring, oops, unhide my ring and there we have our text object in the middle of our ring. So now we have to make this into a curved object so that I can actually place it onto the ring shank or the inside of the ring shank. So to do that, I want to remesh this because I'm going to go into edit mode here and I'm going to show you how bad this mesh is. You can see that it's just kind of a mix of all these little lines and triangles. So I like to remesh this with the characters selected or the text selected. We're going to go back over to the modifiers tool. And I'm going to add in a new modifier called Remesh. Now with Remesh selected, because all the letters are not connected, we have this little remove disconnected pieces. So uncheck that and your words will come back, but they won't look very good. To make them look good, we have to increase the octree depth. And you will just select the little right arrow and you're going to step it up to 7 or 8, depending on how much detail you want. So I'm going to go to over to 8 because this is a small object and it really doesn't make much of a difference for what I'm going to do here. And I will apply that. Now if I enter object or edit mode, you can see that our mesh now is made up of all these little check boxes, all these little squares. And that's perfect for what we want to do here. I'm going to go back into object mode by pressing tab. I am going to size this up a little bit to about here and then I'm going to bring that down to my ring, the inside surface of the ring where I want to put my hallmark 
And you can see that obviously it is not forming well to the curve of the inside of the ring. Again, um, probably shouldn't have deleted my circle, but we're going to add in a new one. So curve, circle, and then I will size that again down to 16 millimeters by 16 millimeters. And I will rotate that along the x-axis 90 degrees. And you can see it is on the inside of our ring shank now. So now I wanted to make my text curve along that Bezier curve. So I will apply a curve modifier, just like we did the ring shank, to the text. With the text selected, come over to your Modifiers tab and we will add in a new modifier called Curve. And I will select the Bezier circle. And you can see it does some funky stuff to our circle. But we are going to turn that around. And it is way off. So let's kind of do this. With the text selected, I'm going to rotate this along the x-axis. We're going to try this RX 180. And that worked out OK. Just opposite of what we have, but that's OK. So there is my characters that are set along the parameter of the inside surface of my ring. And I want these to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to size that up a little bit using the S key and my mouse. And I'm going to make that to about here. And if you look, you can see how deep this gets cut into our ring shank. And if that's about where you want it, that's not bad. Remember that the thinner your text is, the harder it's going to print with your 3D printer or your wax printer because the wax printer cannot print the minute details that we can see on the screen into a real object. So it's good to have a little bit thicker text a little bit bulkier hallmark when you're putting this into a ring. And if your ring shank is below two and a half millimeters, it's going to be very difficult. So just keep that in mind. If that's the case, if you have a wider area on your ring shank, let's say up near the top where maybe perhaps the ring shank gets wider at the top, you can move your hallmarking just by grabbing the uh, red arrow here. And I can kind of put that wherever I want to on the ring shank. And if it's in a wider area, I can actually add some bulk to my hallmark. So keep that in mind. Practice this because it'll help you get familiar with this. <clears throat> now I've got my text lined to the curve. We're just gonna leave it right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna apply that modifier so that now I can get rid of the Bezier circle that I just added. And now my text is actually just, just the way I want it. And if we go into edit mode, you'll see that it's, it's perfect the way we want it. The, the text curves nicely. It's going to work well for what we're going to do. Go back into object mode. I'm going to take my text. I'm going to lower it back down onto my ring to about here. And now I am going to remove the text from the ring. So I am going to actually cut a hole into the ring shank where the text is. And that's going to help us with our hallmark. With the text selected, press and hold the shift key and then select your ring. Now come over to the Boolean tab or your Edit tab, wherever your Boolean tools are, and select Difference. And you can see the Boolean tool cuts a hole in your model. And if it works perfectly, our model will come out just the way we wanted it to. And here it did. So that is a good way of doing that. I'm going to right-click on my ring. I'm going to smooth shade it. And you can see that we have some kind of weird depth changes to our MJB and our 14 karat, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. To get rid of that, we're just going to add in a new modifier to our ring called Edge Split. You can see it keeps our ring nice and smooth, but it makes our text nice and crispy. And I will apply that. And that is how we add in a hallmark to the inside of the ring surface. So there I have the 14 karat hallmark and MJB for MyDrewBench.com. Now the same can be done on the outside perimeter of the ring, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. I'm going to add in a new curve circle. And again, we're going to size that down to 16. Or actually, we're going to make that 19 millimeters by 19 millimeters. Again, I'm going to rotate this along the x-axis, RX90, and size that up. Now again, I'm going to hide my ring and I'm going to add in another text block. So hit Shift A 
we'll come down to text and oh, we're on the reverse here so I'm just going to rotate my screen what we'll tab to go into edit mode and I will type in let's say a name I'll type it in caps and go into object mode now I want to add in some depth so with our text selected we'll come to the text tool here and go into geometry and we will extrude that just a little bit you can extrude that however how you want and again I'm going to give it a little bit of depth yeah, that looks good there and if you do have other fonts that you have on your system you can add in other fonts to this so for instance if I change a font let's say I want to use oh how about an italicized font now my text is italicized but you can see it kind of screws up there so I'll get rid of that get rid of that uh, bevel it didn't come out too well let's select a different text how about how about this one here there we go so that doesn't look too bad I'm going to make that a little bit shorter right about like that I'm going to bring in our ring again we're going to make this a little bit bigger and again we have to convert this over to a mesh object right now you can see right here the word text uh, is a curve and that's the little symbol for a curve so I will right click on it come down to convert to mesh and now it is a mesh I am going to right click again and set my origin to the center of the mass and then shift S to place it again in the middle selection the cursor and now I can take this up to the top and if we want that right like there and we want this to curve along the perimeter of the ring so I will take that text the word Karen and we will come over to our modifiers tab we will add in a curve modifier select our bezier circle and again it disappeared where you go it's way down here let's move that uh, right like that okay that looks pretty good I'm gonna size that just to make it a little wider not too shabby and let's grab that and we'll just move it a little closer just like that so it's inside the ring and with that done I will apply this so we've applied that modifier now we don't need that bezier circle again so I will again delete it again with this selected now this time if I want to I can remesh it uh, I you saw how I did it with the proper way of remeshing the tool and you can see here I did not remesh this but it bent it okay uh, for the most part I would always suggest remeshing it I didn't do it here you don't always have to probably not a bad idea if you did it I'm gonna select the word Karen I'm gonna select our ring and we will do another boolean tool difference just like so and you can see now it is gone and again I'm going to add in just another edge split and apply that and now Karen is nice and crisp and embedded into the ring so we've we've done that hallmarking on the inside of the ring and we've done a nameplate on the outside of the ring that's how you do that I wanted to show you this guys and I hope you enjoyed it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber, considering subscribing because I do these videos. I try to do them once a week. I know it's been a little tough here. Um, Florida is open for business, so I have been slammed, which is really nice. I hope the rest of you are doing okay with this uh, pandemic thing going on. Uh, again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And every time you hit that like button or you leave a comment, it helps my channel grow. So um, do whatever you can because it helps me grow and I appreciate everything else. And thank you guys for helping me get to 2,500 subscribers in a year. That is great. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.